Hey guys, my name is Frank. This is the Pothon Programming Video Log, and today I'm going to be showing you how to draw a two-dimensional tile map from a one-dimensional array of numeric values. So it's a really short little program. It's only 60 lines and there's a lot of white space. All you really need to know is the map and the drawing function. So my map, I just have ones and zeros. Ones represent black tiles, zeros represent white tiles. You can kind of, I don't know if you can make it out just by looking, but I've got a T right here. That represents my T here. And I've got the I, I've got the L right here. I've got my E right here and the exclamation point. And of course, I've got the border around the whole. So you can kind of visualize what the tile map is going to look like by looking at the numerical map in your code, which I think is really cool. So I have a one-dimensional map here. You, a lot of people are like, oh, tile map, get two-dimensional arrays. I don't think that's necessary. A little bit of math can place your tiles for you, and it might be a little bit more expensive to use the math, but you're not doing all those lookups. You're not looping with multiple for loops, so I'm not really sure which is better. I prefer the one-dimensional array simply because I think it looks cleaner, and the drawing code is a lot cleaner. So I have defined two canvases. Uh, the buffer canvas and the context canvas. The context is going to be the drawing context of my actual canvas that I'm displaying in the browser. The buffer context is going to be the buffer that I draw all my tiles to before I draw them to the screen canvas. The reason I have two is because my canvas scales. It's getting tiny, now it's getting bigger. It scales because with HTML, you're going to be on different browsers, different devices. You want to make sure your game can scale up to fit any screen size. And a lot of times with scaling graphics, you're going to have problems with anti-aliasing. So before I added in this buffer, I was having problems with gaps between my tiles. There were white gaps between all my black tiles. It was very unsightly, didn't look good. Actually, I thought it looked kind of cool, but it's not what you want if you have real graphics that you drew yourself, you're not going to want spaces between them because of some stupid anti-aliasing and rounding errors. So by defining this buffer canvas and making it the exact dimensions that I need my map to be, so I have 16 tiles wide here in my map, and I have 9 tiles high. By creating the buffer canvas to be the exact dimensions of my map, I ensure that there are no chance of rounding errors or trying to draw on a decimal value. I'm only drawing on whole numbers here. And then for the scaling, I take care of that when I draw my buffer to my display canvas context. So hopefully you understood that. That was a little shaky there on the explanation, but just doing some improvisational explanation of my code here, so you just got to bear with me. Besides, that's not the important part. This is the important part, the draw map function. This little function right here is responsible for getting the values out of my tile map and drawing the tiles to the corresponding location on the screen. So all I do is I get a for loop up and running, and I loop through all the values in my tile map, which is this sucker right up here. And I store the location in the index variable. So the first thing I do inside the for loop is I set the fill style for my tile. So here we have, we're getting a value from the tile map at the specific index. This is a compound if statement. It's just saying if that value in my map at the position we're looking at is one, we're going to draw a black tile. If it's anything other than one, so say zero, we're going to draw a white tile. And then we come down here and we draw a rectangle with the fill rect function at the location that we want to draw at. So the fill rect function takes four values. It takes an X coordinate, a Y coordinate, and then width and height. So if I come over here and I change the height to 16, refresh my page, as you can see, all the heights of my tiles have been cut in half because size is equal to 32. And that's the size is the width and the height of my tiles because they're square tiles and I didn't feel like making two variables to have the same value. 
So anyway, the thing you want to figure out here, the thing you want to learn is how to place tiles in a two-dimensional grid when you're getting them from a one-dimensional array. I'm going to change this here real quick, get back to the way it used to look. It's actually simple to do that. For the x-coordinate, you're going to use modulus. What modulus does is it basically gets a remainder. So I'm not going to try to explain that. I'm just I'm going to try to show you best I can. So we're feeding it an index, and we do index modulus 16, which is the number of columns in our tile map. I have 16 tile columns right here. And we're going to multiply that value by size, which is 32, to give us our full tile positions. So if I start at index 0, if I feed this line 0 at index 0, we're going to be right here in the tile map. 0 modulus 16 is just 0. And it's going to be equal to whatever that index is all the way up until we get to an index of 16. If we're at index 15, 15 modulus 16 is going to be 15. But then when we get to 16, 16 modulus 16 is actually going to be equal to 0, and it allows us to restart all over again. So it's kind of like if we're just going over this grid, modulus will set us back to the beginning every time we get to 16. Because 16 modulus 16 is 0, 17 modulus 16 is 1, basically just gives us the remainder kind of, and then we multiply that by size to get our actual x coordinate. So then for the y coordinate, we do something kind of similar. We just use division, and we round that divided number down. So say we're at index of 0, 0 divided by 16 is just 0. Uh, round that down is still going to be 0. 0 times size is just 0. Say we're at index 16, 16 divided by 16 is going to be 1. Round that down, we still get 1, multiply it by 32, and we get 32. If we're at 17, 17 divided by 16 is going to be 1 point something or other. We round that value down, it gives us 1, and we multiply by that, that size, and we get 32 again. So this kind of just takes um, a number and puts it into a grid format. If we have a number just on a one-dimensional chain of numbers, like we have in this array up here, depending on the index of that number or the position of that number in that big long chain, these two little functions here will put that into grid format, two-dimensional grid format. So these are really the only two important things you need to know for placing tiles in a two-dimensional map from a one-dimensional array. Hopefully I explained them well enough. I probably didn't, but there's plenty of explanations on modulus and how to use math.floor and, you know, division. So if I didn't explain it well enough, you can certainly go out on the web and figure it out. But I recommend just messing around with this stuff. I learned how to do this from, I think it was a guy named Tony Pa. He did tile-based game tutorials, and I looked at his code upside down and backwards for a very long time to figure this out. And the first time I figured out how to make a tile map, I was really excited because I was like, this is definitely a huge step towards making a game. So the key to understanding it is just to take this, copy and paste it into your own application and fiddle around with it until you kind of understand how everything works. But hopefully my brief explanation of how modulus works and how this little block here, this little line here works for getting the Y coordinate, hopefully that was sufficient. So after we do that, after we draw our individual tile to our buffer, we're going to draw the entire buffer. After we've drawn all those tiles to the buffer, we're going to draw the entire buffer to our on-screen canvas context, which is this guy right here. And this draw image function will take care of scaling for us. So the first value is going to be what we want to draw to the context. And the next four values will be the rectangle we're drawing, the rectangle we're cutting out of that image. So I want to cut out a rectangle that is from position 0, 0, and then goes to the canvas width and canvas height of the buffer. And I'm going to cut that out of the buffer canvas. So basically, I'm going to draw the entire buffer 
onto the drawing context and where I'm going to draw it onto the drawing context is these next four variables. So I'm going to start at the top left corner, the X and Y positions of the rendering canvas, the on-screen canvas, and I'm going to fill the entire width and height of the on-screen canvas. If I were to change this to half of the height by multiplying by 0 0.5, we'll see that now it's scaled to half the size, half the height. So this is a really easy way to scale and it's not bad. It works pretty well. I'm not sure how efficient it is or anything, but it works pretty well. And I've run simulations with lots of different objects bouncing around and it, it works pretty well. So, and it will definitely help you get rid of those gaps between your tiles if you're having that problem. So anyway, that is how to draw a two dimensional tile map from a one dimensional numeric map array. Really simple, really easy code. Down here, I just have a resize function, which calls my draw map function every time the screen resizes takes care of that scaling maintains the aspect ratio of 16.9 for my on-screen canvas. And that's it. That's the whole program. So I hope you guys learned something. I hope you enjoyed the video, even though it was a little shaky there, a little shaky describing the different maths and stuff. Part of the reason I do this is just so I can understand my code better for myself. And the other part is so people that are trying to find quality source code and quality examples with the source code can have that and hopefully benefit from it and make something cool. So hopefully you guys are using these tutorials to do just that because that's my intention. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, like it, subscribe to my channel. I'm going to have more of these videos coming out real soon. Probably going to do tile-based collision detection next. So stay tuned and have a good day. Mm -hmm.